Hey everybody, thanks very much for clicking over here and watching this. So, let's get to it. Um, from grading some of these, it seems like this went pretty well. A little bit of getting things backwards, so just a little refresher, I think. Um, here we have the Cartesian plane. Okay, that just means uh, the plane where we agree that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And uh, when we write these numbers in a certain order, this is the x and this is the y, just the alphabetical order. Okay, positive x's are on this side, negative x's on this side, positive y's and negative y's. Okay, so for the first one, uh, the x is 2 and the y is 3, and together they make this point right here. So that would be a. Uh, b negative 5 on the x-axis, that would be here. 6 on the y-axis takes us here. So that would be point B. Okay. Uh, C, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x-axis, negative 1 on the y. That would be part C. And here, 0 on the x-axis, so don't go horizontal right or left, just stay right there in the middle, and then down 2, negative 2. So there you go. paper down. Alright, this one. Um, some of you remembered one of these things. Nobody knew about how to find its other side, so sounds like you guys didn't get to the Pythagorean Theorem, which is fine. Um, but, for a triangle, all the angles inside should add up to 180. Okay. Uh, this little symbol means that this is 90 degrees. 90 degrees plus 47 plus something is supposed to come out to be 180, okay? So, 90 plus 47 plus that angle X should come out to be 180, okay? Um, if we subtract 90 from both sides, we have 47 plus some other angle should be 90, which some of you maybe did in your head. You're like, oh, that's 90, so these two should add up to 90, right? So we take 47 away from that, we should get what X is, and that is 43. 43. Okay. Looks like we might need to spend some time on uh, the Pythagorean Theorem later, but I will quickly say what it is. Only for a right triangle, one that has a 90 degree angle in it, um, can you say that the hypotenuse has uh, this special relationship with these other two sides, we call them the legs, okay? So if we take this leg, and we square it, and we take this leg, and we square it. We should come up with uh, uh, if we take this leg and we square it, we take eight, we square it, and we add them together. We should get whatever y is squared. Okay, so we add these together, we should get a whatever y is if you were to square y, which means we have to go through a little more of an extra step to figure out what y is. But six squared is thirty-six. Thirty-six plus. Uh, 8 squared is 64, okay, together that's 100, okay, but don't say that's what y is, because again, that's what y would be if you squared it, if you square y, you get 100, so what is y? Well, it's a number that you multiply by itself to get 100, so that would be 10, okay. Uh, here it says complete the table for the equation. Um, I really would have liked to see more of you, if you weren't sure, to try just use your intuition, okay? So here I'm telling you what x is, all right? So x is 2. If x is 2, then what is y? That's all I'm saying there. If x is 2, then some number gets multiplied by 2, and then you subtract 3. So what would you get in that case, right? I could even write this in here. Is this will be whatever I get when I do 2 times 2, because x is 2, and subtract 3. That's 4 minus 3. That's 1. What will I get if I plug a 4 in there? Well, 2 times 4 minus 3. That's 8 minus 3. That's 5. So 5. What about 3? 2 times 3 minus 3. That's 6 minus 3. That's 3. This is different. Now I'm telling you what y is. What if y was 9? So y is 9. Okay. Now I have to figure out what x would be. 
a lot of you are showing me that you have some algebra skills. You know how to solve for x in an equation that's this complicated, so I feel pretty comfortable doing this. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is 6. Okay, maybe some of you said, well, that's got to be 9, and just kind of figured it out. Like, if that's 9, I subtract 3 from something. If you subtract 3 from this thing, it's got to be 9. So this has to be 12. If this is 12, then this would have to be 6, because 2 times 6 is 12. Right? And that's great. It's good to think about that. Here we have, it's not much more complicated than problem number 1. Right? 2 is x, 1 is y. 2 for x, 1 for y. There's that point. 4 for x, 5 for y. 4 for x, 5 for y. Uh, 3 for x, 3 for y. 3 for x, and oh, that last point I made, 4, 4. This is 4, 5. There we go. 3 and 3. 3 for x, 3 for y. 6 for x, 9 for y, which means I did not give you enough room. But for those of you who did it correctly, you went ahead and made room for yourself. So, good job. Alright, next we have uh, basically order of operations, right? Okay, and we're going to talk about this later uh, because, well, let's just say because. So we have this PEMDAS thing, which I like to write this way, and I know there are other teachers who do that as well. I think that's a good thing because it reminds us that multiplication and division, we do them at the same time, left to right. If multiplication's on the left, we do it first. If division's on the left, we do it first. Okay, same thing with addition and subtraction. First thing we do is parentheses, no parentheses. Exponents, no exponents. Multiplication and division. I do not take 8 and subtract 7 first. The very few of you did, if any. I don't even remember anybody doing that. So, first we do 2 times 8. That's 16. Minus 7. That gives us 9. And I know some of these problems are a little different for... Depending on which... Uh, test you took so uh, you know just adjust the there's multiplication and subtraction in both tests uh, in one problem you know adjust uh, do that problem with those different numbers that you might have here we don't have parentheses but we do have exponents so this thing comes first okay I could draw parentheses around all the things that I want to do first and then what I would want to do next okay so exponents come first then I'm going to do multiplication, so I would go ahead and put parentheses around that, because once this parentheses is done, then I'm in these parentheses right here. And then lastly, I subtract the 5. So first we square the 4. That's 5 times 16 now, right? And that's inside the parentheses. Minus 5, right? That comes next. 5 times 16. Um, let's see, that's 80. So that's 80. Right? We just put equal signs here, equals, equals, minus 5, 80 minus 5, that's 75, so, so that's what I'm going to put here, 75. All right here, uh, multiplication and division happen at the same time. This multiplication needs to happen, this division needs to happen. So this first, this, right? These, since they're in their own separate independent uh, parentheses, they can happen uh, independently of each other. Uh, but then, once this multiplication and division are done, we'll just have numbers, right? This will be a number, this will be a number. Then I'll do addition and subtraction from left to right. So I'll do this first. Then I will take this number and subtract whatever this number is, right? So we'll do these parentheses, the innermost parentheses here, and we'll have 3 plus 6 times 4 is 24. Then we're going to have a subtraction here. We're going to subtract whatever 16 divided by 2 is. That's 8. I'll work from left to right, right? So I'll do this first, and then I'll subtract 8. So I'll add these together, 24, 25 to 6, 27, minus 8 is 19. Okay. Now, we you may do 24 minus 8 first and then add 3. That's fine, right? That, that works. As long as you uh, know what you're doing, you can do things a little bit out of order, and it's still the same thing. Here I made a typo. What I should have written was 288. So if you did 288, well, I would say you did it the way you were taught to do it, and therefore you're, quote, right. 
If you got two, you're doing it in a way that you weren't taught to do. And so, wrong, right? With air quotes around wrong. Okay, why is it right or wrong? Um, it's a little confusing, right? Um, when I said that we do multiplication and division at the same time, we just do them from left to right. Why do we do them from left to right? Why don't we do multiplication absolutely first always, and then division after that, and then only move on to addition and subtraction afterwards? Um, you know, why don't we do that? Because that's not what we agreed to do. And I'll let that just... I'll get on my soapbox about that at another time. But we only agreed to do parentheses first, then exponents, and then the agreement is multiplication and division from left to right. Okay. If you don't think that you made that agreement at some point, you just you weren't quite paying attention at, at some point, right? That's what we all agree to do here, uh, for the most part, in North America, in public schools, um, and most of the world around. We work multiplication and division from left to right. Um, so that being the case. We'll do the parentheses first, because parentheses are first, right? So that means we're not going to do 2 times 9. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the parentheses first, okay? Already has parentheses, don't need to bother with it. Then we're going to do division first. We're going to get that number. Then whatever this is, we're going to take this number, whatever it is, and multiply those two numbers together, okay? That will give us the final answer according to the agreement that we made uh, a few years ago when we started to learn an order of operations, all right? So, the best we can do is to say we'll all agree to do it the way I just described, and that will be uh, the way that I'll communicate to you the order that I want it done, so that I don't have to use a bunch of parentheses, is what it comes down to. So anyway, 48 divided by 2 is 24, okay? 9 plus 3 is 12. Those numbers are being multiplied together, and that gives us 288. 288. Okay? So, according to everything that I've ever known and loved, uh, the way I grew up doing math, uh, or at least simplifying expressions, that's the way you would come out with your answer. 288. Okay? But if you went to Saskatchewan, some other place in the world, uh, they may say, because there are some places who do this, they say this first. They say, well, multiplication always comes first before division, okay? So you do this first, right? So you do 48, let's just make quick work of this, 9 plus 3 is 12, 2 times 12 is 24, right? And 48 divided by 24 is 2, okay? And that's the agreement that they've made in Saskatchewan, let's say. Um, probably not, but in some places of the world, that's the way they do it. Okay, and there's no arguing that that's wrong and our way is right. It's just the way we do it and the way they do it. Um, but in this class, if you do these in a different order, if you work multiplication first, even though division is on the left, then I'm going to remind you, and that's not what we agreed to. We agreed to do division first if it's on the left, and then move on from there. Okay, so I was really just trying to figure out where are you guys at? Do you, did you make that agreement? Do you work things in that order? Are are we on the same page about that? Okay. Here, um, you may remember that you need to add 6 to both sides. A lot of you did that. Did great. Um, M equals uh, 24. Okay. Uh, here, since we have 4 times y, we want to divide both sides by 4. Okay. And it's 36 divided by 4 is 9. Here, some of you divide by 2 thirds. Some of you didn't do anything. Some of you weren't sure what to do. Um, here's what I would say. I'm going to multiply 2 thirds by 3 halves. In fact, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 halves. Okay. If I put 3 halves right here and multiply by 2 thirds, then if I work multiplication left to right, what I get here is 6 over 6, or 1. So what I have is 1 times x equals. Okay, so over here we need to multiply these together. Um, however you want to look at it, 30 times 3 is 90, divided by 2 is 45. Okay. Or you could cancel the 2 with 30 and get 15. 15 times 3 is 45. Okay. But I have 1 times x equals 45, so x is 45. 
because 1 times x is the same as x. Here, a lot of you did fine here. Subtract 2 from both sides. Then you have 10x equals 70. Divide by 10 on both sides, and x equals 7. Here, not a lot of you got this one, and that's fine. Okay. Uh, here we would, just like this, subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, and we'll get 6. So r over 16 equals 6. All right. And here what we'll do, since r is some number, and you divide it by 16 to get 6, okay? So imagine r is like in this box. It's a mysterious number in a box. And what I'm telling you is if I multiply this thing, sorry, not multiply it, but if I divide it by 16, if I take this number and I divide it by 16, then what I get is 6, or in other words, if I cut this into 16 pieces, which I could do, I could cut it like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, so I just take a giant knife and I cut it in 4 pieces like this, like that, so there's, it's in 4 pieces, I'll cut in 4 pieces this way too, okay, so I cut it in 4 pieces that way, well look, if you look at it from the top you'll see there are 16, you know, column shaped pieces, there's 16 of them, if I divide it by 16, then I get 6. So this, one of these column-shaped pieces, is worth 6. And so is this one, then, and this one, and this one, and this one. Every one of these is worth 6. Now, remember, the, f the thing I started with, this big box, was the number that is r, okay? So if I divided this by 16, I get 6. If every one of these is worth 6, and there's 16 of them that make up r, and I could just do 6 times 16 and figure out what r is, or I can multiply both sides by 16. 16 over 1, multiply by 16. And r is equal to 96. Same thing here, just kind of without subtracting 5, it's a little bit simpler. We multiply by 5 on both sides. And x is equal to 15. Alright, next page. Uh, this one, not a lot of people got. I think, maybe, a, I don't even know if anybody got it. So, that's fine. This is, like, the most complicated one. I thought maybe somebody would be able to do it. Um, I'm not sure if anybody did. Here we have a variable on both sides, okay? From what I saw here, you're all, most of you, a really large portion of you, are comfortable with things like add 6 to both sides, divide both sides by 4, or that kind of thing, okay? Well, it's no different if both sides, instead of just having a 3 or a 5, if both sides have a 6z or an 8z, I could subtract 6z from both sides, as long as I do it to both sides, okay? And this next part might be a little shaky. If you're, if you remember like terms, okay, to use a vocab that you're probably familiar with, like terms, these are both z's, so I can put them together, okay? 6z minus 6z is nothing, okay? So on this side, I'm just left with a 3. But because of these like terms, 6, or 8z minus 6z leaves 2z. 2z. And on the side, we have 2z minus 5. Now it looks like an equation that a lot of you did fine with. Add 5 to both sides. 8 equals 2 times z. Divide by 2. And we get z is 4. Okay. Here, you don't have variables on both sides, but you do have two instances of variables. More of you got this than this one, but just a few of you. Right? Again, we have like terms. We have a 3x and we have a negative x. 3x minus an x is a 2x. And 15 plus 15 is 30, so you could do that. Some of you subtract 15, subtract another 15. Perfect. Very good. Um, subtract 4 from, or sorry, subtract 30 from both sides. That would leave 2x by itself. And you get negative 34. Divide by 2 on both sides, and you get x is negative 17. All right, here, a lot of good. A lot of people getting this correct. Okay. Remember that we need a common denominator, but. Um, we're going to examine why that is. Why do you need a common denominator here in a bit? Like uh, early on this year, but uh, within the next couple of weeks. 
why do you need a common denominator? Um, I'll leave for later. But for now, we can see the common denominator, hopefully, we know is 20. So we'll multiply this by 5 and this by 5. This will multiply by 3 and this, or sorry, 4 and this by 4 to get a denominator of 20. So we get 15 over 20 plus 12 over 20 gives us 27 over 20. 27 over 20. And that's fine. 27 over 20 is fine. If you write it as 1 and 7 twentieths, that is equally fine. Here we're going to multiply both fractions together. If you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. Why is that? We'll examine it. 4 times 9 is 36. And 15 times 10 is 150. Okay, we simplify that down. Let's say we divide... You can divide both of these by 6. 36 divided by 6 is 6. 150 divided by 6, let's see, that's 25. So 6 over 25. All right. This one, let's try to see, you know, how familiar are you guys with x? And uh, it seems like pretty familiar with x, but then the, the order of operations kind of broke down for a lot, okay? So let's work this through together. So all this means is put a 4 where x is. 4 plus 5. Okay, but now we've all made this agreement, PEMDAS, PEMDAS. So, first we're going to work the parentheses, right? Okay, there's already parentheses there. Then we will work on exponents. There's an exponent right there. What does it belong to? Whatever's in the parentheses. So we've got to figure out the parentheses and then take it to the third power. That's the next thing that we do. After that, what do we do next? Okay, well, we got the parentheses. Okay, we've taken the exponent, so this is just going to be one number. So 3 plus 3 times whatever this number is. So multiplication is next. So multiplication is what happens next. And then we add the 3 at the last. Okay. So 4 plus 5 is 9. It is the number that gets cubed. This little dot means multiplication, if you haven't seen that before. We're going to multiply 3 by whatever 9 cubed is. It is 273, if I remember right. 9 cubed. Wow. Not even close. Not 273. 729. 729. I was just going off my memory from grading. And that was not a good memory. 729, then we're going to multiply that by 3, so I will multiply that by 3. Multiplication comes next, because we've all agreed to use this particular order. 2187, plus 3 more, 2190. What's 15% of 80? Uh, short and sweet of it. What I do, when I, multi when, I, when I figure out what percentages I move the percent, or the, sorry, the decimal over to, Multiply by 80, and that's going to give me 12. So 12 is 15% of 80. Uh, and that does that. And I think that was the last question. Let me check here. Um, oh, maybe not. No, it wasn't. Um, let's see. see what I just said. Okay, so that was the last question. That other thing I was getting confused about, that was the other version of the test. So that does it. That goes through all the, the kinds of questions that you saw on your pretest. Okay, if you have any questions, absolutely let me know. And uh, again, thanks a lot for clicking through and watching this.